If you think you're beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you'd like to win but think you can't, it's almost certain you won't. If you think you've lost, you'll lose. For out in this world we find success begins with a person's will. It's all in a state of mind. Life's battles might always not always go to the stronger or faster one, but sooner or later the one who wins is the one who thinks she can. Now my mom actually made me memorize that poem when I was seven years old, and as you can tell, it stuck. And despite being from a small town in northeastern Pennsylvania where we had more cattle than humans, I learned at a very young age just how important mindset was to success. It was that mindset that allowed me to achieve my dreams of playing soccer at the University of Notre Dame. And when knee injuries ended my career early, it was that same mindset that encouraged me to pick up the boxing gloves in the famed Andy Barakabouts. Now, at that time, I named this mindset, and I called it the Bulletproof Tiger, which subsequently served as my fight name. And if you need a little proof on that one, here is my fight night program picture. Ladies and gentlemen, hashtag BPT, looking right back at you, okay? When I graduated, I went to work in corporate America, and I realized that the same mindset for success existed in business. The same dynamic in sport, where we would have people that were incredibly talented, but perhaps not so motivated and never really seemed to reach their potential, was the same in business. Because there were also people who maybe not weren't so talented, and yet were incredibly motivated, very determined, had a very clear vision, and always seemed to outkick their coverage. That's when I started asking the question, what is it that makes humans perform their best consistently when it matters most? And that set me on a quest to grad school to understand the art and science of human high performance. Now, we are on the storied campus of the University of Notre Dame, where the, the theme, Play Like a Champion Today, has captivated the hearts and minds of people around the globe. And from sport to business to life, we are always looking for, how can I be more consistent in my performance? And what I would like to posit to you today is that that consistency can be achieved by each of us in this room. And it starts with our thoughts. If we are willing to dare to think like a champion today. Brain science reveals that 75 to 98% of all mental and physical health issues are caused due to our thought life. This is a staggering statistic and fascinating at the same time because it also tells us that only two to 25% of those issues are caused due to our genes or the environment. Now, with the mental health statistics in America, which are heartbreaking nonetheless, and perhaps some of your own set of life experiences, you might be a little bit cynical about this notion that our thoughts could actually positively impact our lives. And while I am sensitive to that notion, I ask you to set that aside and give yourself permission for the next few moments to more explore the power of your mind and the power of each of us in this room to unlock our own potential through the way that we think. Scientists originally thought that the brain was static and unchanging but they would later reveal that the brain can actually grow and change based on what we think about. This concept of neuroplasticity reveals that we can actually form new neural connections based on what we think about. So the first thing we need to understand about thinking like a champion is that our thoughts matter because they are literally changing the form and function of our brain. We also know right now that that poem that I learned when I was seven, there was something to that. If you'd like to read more about it, it's called Thinking by Walter Wintel, by the way. But here's what we know. Our thoughts affect our emotions, which affect our physiological, and that's just our body's response, which ultimately is what's going to dictate our performance. So we're on a college campus, so let's pretend we're in class. What starts this process, class? We're not clicking. There we go. What starts this process? Thoughts. This is not rocket science. It's just brain science. Yes! Thoughts, right? Thought starts this process. And who controls your thoughts? We do. We control our thoughts. And if we choose the right thoughts at the right times, we can set this entire process up for success. When I would step under the ropes and into the ring and I'd say to myself, I'm a bulletproof tiger. That made me feel strong, courageous, confident. 
Physiologically, it changed my blood flow, my heart rate, my visual acuity, hormonal responses, and all of a sudden, go on and hit me. That's not gonna hurt. I'm bulletproof. And when I come at you, I'm gonna come at you like a tiger. But let's take a step back. So I work predominantly in the fields of football, ice hockey, and business. So as you can imagine, there's an initial hesitation to talk about things like our brain, and thoughts, and mindsets, because, well, we can't see it, right? We can't see our brain being able to focus more effectively like we can see our biceps getting bigger, right? We can't see our brain being able to refocus more efficiently like we can see our waistline getting smaller. We can't see our brain showing up more confident like we can see our costs going down or our revenues going up. So sometimes it's a challenge to believe that anything's even happening behind this little skull of ours. So we have some people in the audience who have been given a hex nut tied to a string. These are not planted individuals. We did give them the string, but this is not magic. So if you have some, those of you that have the hex nut with a string, I'd like you to hold it out in front of you. Go ahead and pull those out. I want you to hold it out in front of you. And again, we're trying to see here, what is the connection between the brain and the body? I want you to stare at the hex nut, and without touching it and without moving your hand, I just want you to think in your mind, move forward and backwards. Forward and backwards. Forward and backwards. Excellent. All right, we got some movement going over there. Nice job, ladies. Boys, catch up. There we go. Good. All right, good. Now, without touching the bolt, without moving your hand, I just want you to think bolt move side to side. Side to side. Excellent. Good job, everybody. All right, give them a round of a quick little round of applause. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Excellent. I know we have a lot of cynics out there, so your homework assignment is to go ahead Get yourself a string, tie it to a hex nut, and try this out yourself. But here's what we know about how the brain functions. Every time we have a thought, it sends an electrical signal through our neurons into our muscles to execute the action. So they had the thought forward and backwards. That movement gets picked up in your minor fingertips, carries down the string, gets picked up in the hex nut. Let's look at it this way. What happens if I want this bolt, this hex nut, to move forward and backwards, but I'm thinking side to side? What happens? It's, but I want it to go forward and backwards, but I'm thinking side to side. How many times in our lives do we show up to the free throw line and we want to make the shot, but we're thinking, just don't miss it? Or we stand over the golf ball and we want to put it right on the fairway, but we're thinking, just don't put it in the water. That's, that's a free one, golfers. Or we show up to the date or the presentation or the sales meeting and we want to be poised and confident and knock it out of the park, but we're thinking about all the reasons we might fail or our insecurities. That's like wanting that hex not to move forward and backwards, but we're thinking side to side. Every thought we have matters because it's sending an electrical signal through our bodies. Imagine what your moments that you show up to might look like if you were to pick thoughts that actually aligned with the outcome you desire. Imagine if we had positive thoughts in those moments, and I get it. Like, listen, positive thinking has gotten a bad rap over the years, but it is not some fluffy, hopeful thing where we hold hands and sing kumbaya. We can, that'd be fun, but it's more about a performance-enhancing strategy because when our brains are in a positive state, they think more clearly, they think more creatively, and they problem solve better. There is not one of my athletes, coaches, business leaders, or parents that would not like individuals to show up thinking clearly, creatively, and problem solving in the midst of action. And when we choose to think like a champion, we position ourselves to increase our probability of success. Let's look at this in a more applicable way, and even a, a large life experience. So I conducted a study with former NFL players on their transition experience out of the league, entitled, When the Lights Go Out, How Do They Turn Back On? What we found is that the main challenge these men were trying to solve was how do I rediscover and redefine purpose in my life now that football's over? We came out with a three-model theory where the first one was just a general former life timeline. Model two gave us an understanding of what the macro transition process looked like when these men went from being in the locker room, literally, 
to living a life on an island for however long of time until they were able to generate that sense of purpose and create a whole new world for themselves. The third model really helped us dive into that rediscovery and redefinition of purpose. And what I found was that the way these men thought about three particular areas allowed them to successfully or unsuccessfully create a vision for success after football. The first was their self-identity. Who were they? The second was how did they connect and serve others? And finally, what, how did they think about their ability to replicate the blueprint for success that they had constructed for football and transition that to life beyond ball? So again, how these men thought about these three areas impacted their ability to navigate their transition process because of what the electrical signals that were getting sent through their bodies were, were being sent. Now listen, the brain is not a muscle in the scientific sense, but it functions like a muscle in the sense that the parts of it that we use grow, the parts of it that we don't use get smaller. I'm about 20 pounds lighter than when I played because I haven't lifted in a long time, right? We don't use a muscle, it gets smaller. The brain is the same way. The parts of it that we use get stronger, the parts of it that we don't use get smaller. And what we know is that we can have unhealthy mindsets or healthy mindsets. These mindsets, again, patterned ways of thinking, actually get woven into the fabric of your brain. So thoughts are just not these ephemeral things that float around in the world that just don't matter. As we repeat thoughts, they actually build protein patterns that web into our brain. And unhealthy, so these are pessimistic, distressed, anxious, fearful thought patterns, show up as like gray holes when we look at them in brain scans. If you'd like a different visual, I want you to think of a forest that's been scorched by fire, right? Where all the limbs are dead and distorted and twisted. That's what these neural connections look like. On the flip side, healthy, optimistic, hopeful, positive, joyful mindsets show up as bright, vibrant electrical activity in brain scans. Again, for a different image for our non-science people, think of the luscious rainforest, right? Which is bright with, electric, with activity happening in life. That's what these brain scans look like. Mindsets are patterned ways of thinking. One of my favorite stories is I was out at football practice, and one of my players comes up to me, puts his arm around me, and he, and he looks down, because I'm short. And he says, Doc, I've never thought so much about what I've been thinking about. And this mindset stuff is really helping me get better on and off the field. Just like the men in my study, who had a choice about how they thought about themselves and their world and built mindsets around them. We all have a choice to build mindsets that we either turn the lights back on in our lives or leave us lost in darkness. And I ask you to consider today what areas of your life, your relationships, your faith, your work, your school, your identity could turn the lights back on if you were to build your championship mindset. I'd like to leave you with three strategies that you can use to start training your brain. The first, the first is break down and build. Listen, we all have negative mindsets, so we just have to identify them. Identify the negative mindsets that you have built up in your life, and just pick one of them to start. And then I want you to figure out what are you going to replace that with? What is the positive, hopeful, optimistic, right mindset that you want to replace that with? And every time you catch yourself thinking, I'm not smart enough, or I don't do well under pressure, or I ruin every good thing in my life. I want you to replace it and build the right mindset. If I study enough, I can learn this. You know what? I'm going to start thriving under pressure. And I've been working on my character, so you know what? I can sustain goodness in my life. Break down and build. Second strategy, see it and repeat it. See it and repeat it. Listen, when pressure comes or adversity strikes or that random negative thought comes out of nowhere and blasts your brain, right, we've all had that, we need to be able to see right thoughts, championship caliber thoughts, and see it and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it until we get that thought, emotional, physiological response shifted back into our favor so that we can show up and deliver. This looks different for everybody. For one of my executives, he has a placard on his desk that reads, leaders initiate contact. 
to remind him to initiate contact and connect with his people. For one of my linemen, he tapes his wrist and he writes pit bull across it. So when he puts his hand down, the last thing he sees is pit bull, reminding him to come off that line with the speed and ferocity of a pit. Or for me, I wear this little wristband that literally says, think like a champion, to remind me that every thought I have matters and to choose thoughts that are going to position me to be successful. And finally, focus on win. This comes from my good friend and Notre Dame football legend, Coach Lou Holtz, where win stands for what's important now. I want you to ask yourself, what's important now in every moment? Because the answer to that question is where our attention and our energy should be directed. Additionally, this needs to be something in your control, right? So for perhaps you just pulled an all-nighter, but you have to go take an exam now. What's important now? That you eat something to refuel your brain and that you get yourself energized to go in and crush your test. Additionally, perhaps you've just got bad news from your marketing team, but you're supposed to step into a potential client's office and give them a pitch. What's important now? That you identify the key points that you have, put yourself in a good state, and go in there and be persuasive. Focus on what's important now. When we learn to control our moments, the moments don't control us. Ladies and gentlemen, from the locker room of our sports teams, to the boardrooms of our businesses, to the classrooms of our schools, to the living rooms of our homes, we must dare to think like a champion because quite literally our teams, our businesses, our kids, our families, our very own lives are influenced and changed based on what we choose to set our minds to think upon. Thank you, God bless you, and the next time you catch yourself thinking about what you're thinking about, dare to think like a champion.